we're going to have a look at reciprocal functions. Now, when you think about fractions, right, uh, like three-fifths, what is the reciprocal of three-fifths? Five-thirds, right? So you know that taking the reciprocal of something is just looking at that thing and then saying, what's one divided by that thing, right? One divided by three-fifths <laughs> is, like you told me, five-thirds. And that's all we're thinking about, but with fac fractions, sorry, not with fractions, with functions. There's a whole bunch of different numbers, not just individual numbers like three-fifths. So we're going to start off simple. We're going to start off with a nice linear function like this. And what we're going to do is, even though I could give you the equations, I could give you the algebra for this, that's kind of not really the point. What the, the skill we're trying to focus on here is the ability to visually think about things. You do have, um, you do have like, grids and scales on here to help you, you will need that. In fact, if you have your calculator there, that might also be handy to have nearby. But what we're going to do is we're going to go through, uh, and if you have another color that might make this easier, that would be really useful. How do you take a function and then graph its reciprocal? If you turn the page over, um, we're also going to look at what happens when you take a function and you square it. You take that function, you multiply by itself, okay? But we'll come to that later on in this lesson. Let's have a think about reciprocals, okay? Now what I'm going to do is walk you through how we can do this in the simplest way, and then I'm going to summarize, and you'll see when I summarize, I'm actually going to do it in reverse order. You'll see why in a minute. So this is f of x. Let's actually label that as such. We'll call this guy here y equals f of x. And what I want to work out is what does y equals 1 on f of x? That's the reciprocal, okay? I want to know what does that thing look like if I know what the original function looks like. So the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is to look with me at some important values. There are some important places on the graph that I can look and I can draw some conclusions. Okay, Rastin, can you see one? Okay, at negative 2 down here. So you can just read that value off, right? Any value that you can just read off the graph. Negative 2, I know what the reciprocal of negative 2 is. Can someone tell me what the reciprocal of negative 2 is? It's negative... A half, great. And you can see where negative a half should go. Uh, if that's negative 2, that's negative 1 there, right? So negative a half, I'm going to place there, okay? So I'm going to put a little cross there, okay? Rastin, hold your thought. I know you've got a few more thoughts to keep us going through, but I want to get everyone together, okay? So if I can just read off a point like that, that's good. Um, I notice there's another point, another value I can just read off straight away. Here, and I'm thinking about the y values, right? <laughs> At that intercept, the y value is equal to... Zero, yeah? What's the reciprocal of zero? Zero. The reciprocal zero. of zero. Well, it's one over zero, but we know that that's undefined. You can't divide by zero, it breaks, okay? Now, for reasons that will become clearer a little bit later on, what we're gonna draw here at zero is a vertical asymptote, okay? So go ahead and draw through a dotted line, because what we're saying is, see that undefined? It's like you can't take the reciprocal of that thing. You're not allowed to go there, right? And what that means visually is we're going to get a vertical asymptote. And we'll explore a little more of why that is the shape we get a little bit later on. But for now, that'll do for me. Okay, so we've got this negative a half. We've got this vertical asymptote here. By the way, what's the equation of that vertical asymptote? X equals 2. Very good. Let's just label that. That's important information. Okay, now the other points that I'm interested in, the interesting values are, where does this graph, this graph here, when is its y value equal to 1? Have a look. This is where 2 is, right? So here's where y equals 1 is. Where on the graph, what x value gives me y equals 1? 0. I think it's over here, isn't it? Over here at, that's 2, then 3, then 4. So 3, an x value 3 gives me a y value of 1. What's the reciprocal of 1? One. It's also 1. Okay. Uh, one last important point, and then we'll start thinking about overall shape. Uh, you know, negative 1, where's negative 1? It's right there. Do you see that? Negative 1? Yeah. What's the reciprocal of negative 1? Yeah. It's also negative 1. So the reciprocal goes right through there. Okay. So what I've got is some important points. The reciprocal function is going to go through these x's that I've drawn here, and it's going to avoid that asymptote. Okay. Now, one last thing before we can actually put the picture in. When you have numbers like, say, let's say 1 over 2, 1 over 3, 1 over 4, you can see here the denominator is increasing, right? As the denominator gets bigger, what happens to the whole number? The whole number gets smaller, right? So if you're taking the reciprocal of something that is increasing in size, the reciprocal is 
decreasing in size. Does that make sense? Now have a look over here. See how my y values are increasing. Up and up and up and up, right? That means that their reciprocals over on this side are going to go down and down and down and down. They're going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay? Now as I have a look at these numbers over here, like a quarter, let's go for like say a tenth and a hundredth and a thousandth. So you can see these numbers are getting smaller, right? But they don't just get smaller and smaller forever. They actually have a limit that they can't go past. What's the smallest you could possibly get to? You, think about like as a decimal, right? Uh, a quarter is 0 0.25, then you've got 0 0.1, then 0 0.01, 0 0.001. 0 0 0 0 you can see I could, I could add a whole lot of zeros in there, right? But then there'd always be like a 1 at the end or something like that, right? You can never actually get to 0, can you? Right? No matter how huge your denominator is, you'll never actually get 0. Right? So what that means is, I'm going to get closer and closer and closer to 0, but I'll never actually get there. And what's the name of that kind of shape? That's an asymptote, right? It's going to be here at y equals 0. So you can draw a dotted line across there as well. Yeah, question. Do you know when we put, um, when we put minus 1 on the straight line, isn't the reciprocal of minus 1 minus 1? The reciprocal of minus 1 is minus 1. So that's what I'm going through. It's y values we're thinking about, right? It's a y equals minus 1. Here, for example, y equals minus 2. So its reciprocal is minus a half. Okay? Um, I could pick another point, like for example, just to test out our asymptote theory, right? So here is uh, this value here. This is y equals 2. So what's its reciprocal going to be? One half. One half, which is down here. Why don't we put an x there as well? Yeah. That's y equals to 0. It's a horizontal line. Yeah? OK. Now, we're almost there. Um, I want to just put a little more information on here to confirm what I think is going to be happening. right? What's this y value here? What y value do I get on that point of the line? A half. That's a half. What's the reciprocal of a half? Two. It's two. I'm going up, right? Which sort of is what I expect. And remember that asymptote that I drew early on, the vertical one? You're like, oh, look, I'm approaching that, right? And you can see the same thing happening in reverse over here. See this value here? What y value is that? Negative, negative a half. So the reciprocal of negative a half will be negative two down here. OK, I feel like between those x's and those asymptotes, I feel like we've got enough of a shape here, right? Can you connect the dots? I think we're going to get a shape a bit like this. There's the left-hand side. And I'll do my best to do the right-hand side. OK, now this is a familiar shape. This is a shape which has a name. What is this guy? This is a hyperbola. Now, we were thinking about this visually. I deliberately did not say, hey guys, we're going to get a hyperbola out of this. Because I want you to think about the features and what you're going to get out of it. At this point now, you can probably work out. See this straight line? It's not just any old function. This particular function is x minus 2. right? So this blue function, the reciprocal, what you've just worked out is y equals 1 over x minus 2, which you could have graphed on its own without thinking about it as a reciprocal. Okay? But I want to point out, right? we thought about important values. We thought about where I would be fenced in to go. And then we said, OK, well, now I'm just going to join the dots. 